Investment has been the name of the game in the social media world, and it's just, it's, it's filtered out into the regular world. I mean, a guy on a street corner right now is asking, hey, investment, man, you got any stock tips for me? Well, uh, no, we don't do that on this show. However, I think there are some very undervalued brands right now and teams in college football. I had to whittle this down because I get aggressive. I am an eternal optimist in the offseason. I always want to find the path. I got 37 teams right now that I think could win the national championship this year. So I cannot tell you what the next game stop is going to be, but I do think I can tell you a few teams right now that if you want to sound smart come December and not just 2021, but 22, 23, 24, these are probably the programs you want to keep a little bit of an eye on. Let me start with Penn State. We had not talked about the Nittany Lions in a few weeks. The last four years before this last year, so uh, 15, 16, 17, or 16, 17, 18, 19, Penn State's win total. In those four years leading up to this past year, which was a debacle, and we'll talk about it in a second, 11 wins, 11 wins, 9 wins, 11 wins. Then they go 4 and 5. It was the COVID year, obviously. Now, 2020 had disproportionate impact program to program. We have well established that on this show. We do not believe every program was impacted equally. There is no metric. I cannot quantify it for you. I'm just telling you, when I watch a program go from 11 to 11 to 9 to 11 to... 0-4 0-4 to start the year, I don't think that would have happened in a normal year. That's just my guess. I could be wrong. That's just my guess. However, there were other things going on there too. I mean, James Franklin had family issues behind the scenes that were kind of, it was well enough documented to where Penn State fans are probably aware of it. I'm not making excuses. I'm telling you this is probably a contributing factor. They had a new offensive coordinator in there. Worst possible time. No spring ball. Kirk Soraka ends up not working out. You got Mike Yurcich in now. A lot of experience back. Uh, hopefully a full spring to integrate his philosophy into Penn State football and offensively there. James Franklin, I believe, turned down the Tennessee job. I know Danny White wouldn't tell you that, but I believe the Tennessee job was James Franklin's if he wanted it. He turned it down. Again, that's my opinion. Not coming in a press conference anytime soon. He is fully committed. You hope he's reinvigorated. I think he probably got some facility promises that he was sort of looking to broker. And so everything signed off there. The roster's probably undervalued. It's not quite Ohio State. It's not close to Ohio State. And therefore, I think it gets overlooked. But if you look at it nationally and forget about conference boundaries for a second, Penn State's in a really good place. You know, if I were to drop Penn State in the ACC, it would immediately become well, there they are. They're, they're a premier challenger to Clemson, but yet it's not quite thought the same way in the Big Ten. Another program that I'm looking at is Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma, it's a little more high-profile program here, so it's already worth a lot. I still think the Sooners are undervalued. The immediate return is there because they could win the national title this year. Like They're a, probably as legitimate a contender this upcoming season as they have been at any point under Lincoln Riley there. They have overhauled their philosophy. I could contend they were playing better defense down the stretch than both teams that played for a national title. They weren't as good a team, and even though they got hot in the latter portion of the year, I don't think they were ready to contend quite yet with Buckeyes or Crimson Tide, but I do believe they were playing better defense. Now, I just want to pause for a second because I'm going to talk about this in relation to Georgia in just a few minutes. Did you think I would be saying that three years ago? I'm not telling you they were better than either one of those. I said they were playing better and higher quality defense than either one of those at the end of the year. Did you ever think you were going to hear that? No. Well, when we talked about Oklahoma back in the spring and I said, hey, I think they're going to eventually be a legitimate national title contender because they're going to play better defense, I got some pushback. And that's because you hadn't seen it before. But what I said and the point I made is, There's no motivation for really smart coaches to continue doing the same thing when they're not getting good results. So Lincoln Riley had already made changes. He had already brought Alex Grinch in. They had already started to radically overhaul their defensive roster. You just hadn't gotten immediate results, so everyone kept on saying, well, Oklahoma will never play good enough defense. No, they hadn't played good enough defense, but now they do. You know what else they have this year? A returning quarterback, a ton of talent returning all over the place. They'll have their best team, I think, under Lincoln Riley this year. So They're a football team that is already an elite power, but now the competitive balance is there to where that's a really good value play, not to make the playoff, but to potentially win a national championship. Now, Oregon is in a conference whose appearance drags them down. And I think we all understand the dynamics in play there. That's why Oregon's kind of got to operate in a national approach. They recruit already at a national approach. That's the word I want to focus on here. When I mention Oregon, you probably immediately think, um... 
okay, good story this past year, won the Rose Bowl the year before. I don't take them as seriously as a national contender because why? Wait for it, wait for it. They're in the Pac-12, and no Pac-12 team can do this or that. Um, I don't think about teams like that. Oregon is a tick or two, obviously, off the national pace, but Oregon's also recruiting at equal to or higher levels than a lot of teams that may be a little bit ahead of them in that national landscape. Do you understand, because I don't think some people do, you understand how elite their recruiting operation is right now? They're sitting at number six, not in the Pac-12, in the country, and are probably going to rise. we got signing day coming up less than a week from now, which will be live here in this studio. Hey, Oregon's not done. i got news for you. Oregon may finish higher than number six. They are currently rated higher than the likes of Texas A&M, USC, which are having a good year, the Trojans are, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Florida, North Carolina, like all these programs are thrust into the mainstream conversation. Oregon, maybe not so much because of the affiliation conference-wise. Hey, they're recruiting better than those programs are right now. And they're obsessed with it. That is the name of the game there. Recruiting, they are obsessed with. It is a constant 25-hour-a-day operation at Oregon. I know exactly what I just said. So because of that, they are going to possess a talent roster that's not going to allow them to fail. And they're getting quarterback answered, hopefully, in this class. Now, Ty Thompson's already rated high. Uh, a little birdie told me there are some people out there that still believe he's underrated, believe that fifth star should be next to his name, and believe it should be Ty Thompson that's inserted right there in that discussion as top quarterback in the country or right there with the Drake Mays of the world, for example, Caleb Williams of the world. So, hey, for their sake, I hope that's true. I don't claim to be a scout here. I just know a few of them. But Oregon, keep an eye on the Ducks and also Texas A&M. Now, Texas A&M was right there in the playoff conversation this year, but Texas A&M has... Either the good fortune or the misfortune, depending on your perspective, of hiding in Alabama's shadow as they've grown into an elite college football power. Everything's there, though. Now, I've, I've talked a lot about Texas A&M. I believe everything is there, and the only real hurdle is, subconsciously, everyone knows, I'm not going to buy into them until they get over Alabama, and Alabama, they got to play them every year. So as long as Nick Saban's there, can't really take the Aggies seriously. Uh, well, I can. I mean, I'm a believer that eventually Jimbo can get that program, and maybe he already has, to a point where they don't need to win the West or the SEC to make the playoff. And uh, if you don't believe that, or if you're not a fan of that ideology, the last thing in the world I would advise you to do is support college football playoff expansion. Because truth be told, that's probably the only thing keeping multiple SEC teams like, for instance, Texas A&M out. If you evaluate this program everything is there. Don't be the person that gets shocked when A&M makes the playoff. Don't be the guy who looks around and says, I knew they were decent, but man, they kind of came out of nowhere. No, they haven't. They've built the right way. Their infrastructure's in place. Their recruiting operation's in place. They've beat Alabama straight up on a couple of guys. I mean, McKinley Jackson last year, they beat Alabama straight up for him. And that wasn't some Texas kid where they had an inherent advantage. Like, they they went into, I think it was Mississippi, beat Alabama straight up for them. They've won some recruiting battles. They're doing a really good job there. They've built the nucleus inside out. They got depth along the lines of scrimmage. They got to get better on the perimeter at wide receiver, and they got to get the quarterback in there. And listen, that's not insurmountable. Haynes King on campus already may be the guy at quarterback is what I'm saying. So it's not like we're trying to look, look far and wide for a potential transfer. King may be the guy. And if he is, A&M's going to be right there. That's not, that's not a program that even Alabama is just going to bully and you know push off the street. Uh, that'll be a lot more like those classic LSU battles of years past if they get quarterback figured out. If they don't, it's 52-24 time every single year. But those are some thoughts on uh, good college football investments right now.